record and we are recording. Um, and with that introduction, I will uh, mute myself, turn my camera off and let Lindsay get started. Awesome, thanks so much, Jenny. Um, okay, I'm gonna post some links in the chat. I'm personally a very visual learner. So I put some of the files I'm gonna be using in this presentation, I'm gonna have you look at them into a folder. Um, you can open that now or you can look at it later or I'll share the direct links to those files and you can just save it for another time. Um, also, I put a, a link to the presentation slides themselves, just in case you wanna look at them um, you know, on your own pace or have them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my presentation. And then there's always the like moment of, now I have to find Zoom again. And now I have to find the share button. All right, let's see. Okay, can I get some thumbs up if you're seeing the um, effective cover letters title page? I actually don't see any faces, so. And I don't have chat anymore. Okay, cool, there's the thumbs up. Awesome, thank you. And actually, um, now that you said that, let me just make a note, I forgot to say this. If anyone does have questions throughout, please put those in the chat. I'll be monitoring chat while Lindsay presents um, and uh, we will uh, go from there, okay. Cool, thank you, Jenny. Um, and I did practice this before, but now I'm not seeing where I can get to the chat. We'll worry about that later. All right, like Jenny said, I'm Lindsay Geithen. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a brand new librarian at the University of North Carolina Greensboro. Um, I started my position as a data services librarian on August 1st. And I, I'm just, I'm gonna tell you all um, how this presentation came about. I'm not gonna share this with um, the students next week, but um, there's a woman named uh, Dr. Kawana Bright. She is an LIS instructor at East Carolina University. She also earned her PhD um, in research methods at the University of Denver, which is my alma mater for my LIS degree, um, as well as where I used to work. So I never actually had her as a teacher, but I got to know her some because we had similar research interests. Um, she's a really, really lovely, wonderful human. If you ever have an opportunity to see one of her presentations, I highly recommend doing so. Um, but she posted looking for guest lecturers for her LIS students. I'm not even sure which class it is, but um, she had a list of topics that she was looking for. And she also said, if there's a topic that you would be interested in presenting on, um, let me know. And so I said that I really wanted to present about the job search because I think that in my experience in library school, that wasn't something that we talked about and we sort of just sent all of our LIS grads into the world like, okay, you've been to library school, you have your degree, have fun getting a job with none of the like tools under their belt, belts on how to do that. Um, so I kind of wanted to demystify it a little bit. Um, and then also, for me personally, I spent a long time looking for a job, partly because of the pandemic, partly because I was looking for the, the best job and the right fit. Um, but I have a lot of experience with applying to jobs. And then in my previous role, I hired a lot of people. I supervised a department of about 40 in an academic library. Um, and this last summer, my last project was hiring three people um, in the access services department at DU. Um, and I, I think I read close to 300 applications. There was, I think like 85 for one. Um, and the, the most that we had was around 115. So I read a lot this summer. And in doing that, I have um, both in applying to things and reviewing applications, I've, I've learned a lot of what to do and what not to do that I wanted to share. So um, our student learning outcomes for today, the students in this class have a presentation, or I'm sorry, they have an assignment that's tied to it. They need to analyze job advertisements and highlight key terms, and they also need to write an effective cover letter. So we're gonna spend a lot of our time, probably most of our time focusing on those two things. But I also wanna talk a little bit about being an organized job seeker and some strategies for doing that. So those are what I'm hoping everyone will walk away able to do. Um, if you don't know, this is Angela Merkel. She 
used to be the chancellor of Germany. Um, and this meme of her became popular very recently, but she also recently stepped down from leadership. And I like to think that that's probably how she would feel if she needed to write a cover letter for a job because no one likes writing cover letters. No one likes reading them either, but we all have this sort of sheer terror about it. Um, so we're just gonna kind of demystify it and talk about it some. So first thing, uh, theoretically, we all know what the components of a job posting are, but I thought we should just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so you can type these in the chat, um, but what are the sections of a job description that you might find? And then I have to take a minute to find the chat. I'm happy to read them aloud if you aren't able to. I found it. Okay, good. Uh, I tried it. Um, I actually opened a Zoom room with just myself in it while I was practicing, but it's very different when people are in it. Um, all right, so we have required qualifications, preferred qualifications. Yes, Anna, and that's mostly what we're going to be talking about today. I'm sure you're not surprised. Um, Alyssa adds, we also have job description, institution description, hopefully something about benefits. Yes. Suzanne says uh, about the qualifications, duties, sometimes a salary range, not often correct. Very good. You guys are so smart. I'm going to put them up on the screen anyway. Um, but yeah, it's usually going to start with about the institution and about the location where the institution is. You'll have a summary. Um, this is a cataloging librarian. They catalog books and write metadata, et cetera responsibilities similar to the job summary, but you're gonna have percentages with the things in the job summary, usually very important. Required qualifications, preferred qualifications. And I wanna talk about those for a second. Um, let's say a job has five required qualifications and there are three that you're like, yeah, I can do those in my sleep. And then there's one, and you're like, oh, I can kind of do that. And then there's one thing that you've never, ever seen before. A lot of um, people with marginalized identities um, and women tend to shy away from jobs when they have, if they have five required qualifications and they haven't applied to all of that or, and they, they don't have direct experience with all five. Um, and yes, Rachel, I wasn't gonna say that in my very professional presentation, but um, if you meet, three, if you meet most of them and you're interested in the position, you should absolutely apply. You don't have to meet all of the required qualifications. You don't know what the rest of the pool is going to look like and whether or not um, the rest of those folks have all of the required qualifications. So you, you should totally throw your ring or throw your name into the hat um, or into the ring. Same thing goes for the preferred qualifications. Those are preferred. If you meet them, awesome. Highlight those. If you don't meet a single one, that's okay. You should still apply to the job. There are things that your employer prefers. Um, and you can talk about those things and how you would like to learn them in your cover letter if there are something that you would like to learn. Then we usually have like, here's how you apply to the job. Um, I called it legal jar jargon. They usually talk about if they're an equal opportunity employer or um, if they do preferred hiring for certain groups of people like um, veterans, et cetera. And then sometimes you'll see a salary range. Actually, the state of Colorado recently made salary range a requirement, which was pretty cool, um, but that is, not, that is not a thing in, uh, in North Carolina, as far as I'm aware. So next, um, what is the purpose of a cover letter? I want you to put your employer hat on for a second. What's an employer looking for when they're reading your cover letter? Uh, these are all, yes, they're all excellent, excellent ideas. And Suzanne, you jumped ahead a little bit. We are going to talk about our 
like what we're doing in a cover letter as an applicant as well. But the employer, um, they want to see if you meet the preferred and required qualifications for the job. And yes, they are looking at your communication skills. Can you write? Are you an effective communicator? Um, did you list the right institution? Yes, we'll talk about that later. Um, but also like a little bit about you um, and your qualifications. So specifically when I was trained to review applications, I went to hiring practices trainings um, and I'm, I'm screening a pool of 115 applicants. I have a spreadsheet. I put in every applicant's name and then there are columns for each of the required qualifications and each of the preferred qualifications. And on the very initial screen, the only thing I'm doing is putting the applicant's name and a check mark next to each of those qualifications and whether or not they need it or not. Um, hopefully, I'm picking up on some of the things like what else does the candidate have to offer that's maybe not in the job description, but is something that we're looking for for the position. The applicants, what they're looking for is strictly to secure the first interview. Yes. Like no one wants to write a cover letter, but your goal in writing that is to get you the first interview. That's really all you're looking to do with your cover letter. And I see a lot of great conversation happening in the chat um, and I'm not able to get to every comment, but yes, we all know a lot about cover letters, which is great. Okay. Okay, so back to the job posting. If our only goal in our cover letter is to get the interview, um, which sections should we focus on? And if the employer's using the cover letter as a screening tool to see your qualifications, yes. Sorry, I keep toggling between the chat and the next button and it's delaying my clicks a little bit. But yeah, you should really focus on the required qualifications and the preferred qualifications. And then also you should look at the, the job summary and the responsibilities. The rest of this is, is still important. Um, the about the institution and about the location is gonna illustrate why you really wanna work there and why you might be a good candidate compared to everyone else if everyone else has a really awesome cover letter, but you really need to make sure you focus on those qualifications. All right, there is a correct answer to this question. It is a yes, no question. There is a, a, a yes, a correct answer. Should an applicant write an original cover letter for every job? Yes, yes, you absolutely should. I know that we don't want to, um, and it feels a lot of times like job descriptions start to run together and they're all the same, but you absolutely need to write an original cover letter for every job. And we're gonna look at how you would write a different cover letter for two, because I'm a data services librarian, two different data services librarian um, postings. Um, fun facts, two of them. First, how long does the average employer spend looking at an applicant's application packet, all of the paper materials? Rachel, you are like, you are an advanced learner in this class. You have all of the answers that I'm looking for. Um, it's 60 seconds. Yes, she said 30, but the point I'm trying to get is we spend hours deliberating over our cover letters and an employer is not gonna spend that long at it. They'll spend about a minute reviewing your whole application packet, but they only spend six to seven minutes or six to seven seconds looking at um, a resume. That seems like a really, really short amount of time. Um, and I, I can attest to this. That is about how long you will spend looking at a resume. I review resumes, not CVs, and an application packet when you are just doing that initial screen. So um, hopefully your mind's a little bit blown like mine. Um, it is painful to know. Um, but that's why it's really important to make sure you're addressing those qualifications um, and why you're analyzing the job ad and sort of pulling out keywords, which is what we're about to practice doing. I also wanna point out that a lot of employers, if anyone is looking for jobs in the private sector, a lot of companies will use something called an, oops, sorry, applicant tracking system. 
Um, and I have the wrong acronym there. So I'm just gonna draw a quick note so that I fix that slide 14. Sorry. Um, should say ATS in parentheses. So an applicant tracking system is just a program that screens um, applications instead of a human. So they really are looking specifically at words and phrases. Um, so when we talk about analyzing a job ad, we've already talked about highlighting keywords, and then you want to use those keywords in your cover letters, as well as the skills sections on your CV or resume. But also, I just want to point out that semantics matter. Um, I can spend all day talking about how I've done, uh, like I have extensive customer service experience and in an interview, that's what I'm going to say. But if a job description talks about wanting someone with patron experience, my cover letter needs to say patron experience. My resume needs to say patron experience. It's pretty much the same thing, but making sure that you're using the terminology that is in the job description is really important. Um, because you don't want to make the search committee do any work to see that you're qualified for the position. You want to lay it out really clearly. So I always like to use their language um, in my cover letters and in my, in my resumes. Um, so we're going to take a look at a couple of uh, job descriptions. I already mentioned that they're for data services librarian positions. So hopefully that's okay with everyone. I'm gonna share just a couple of links um, to the job descriptions, but I've already pre-highlighted these for you. And some feedback that I am looking for today is if you think I should leave the highlights or if I should take it out and make them highlight for themselves. Um, I think I'm pretty tight on time. So that's sort of why I highlighted them ahead of time. Also because it had already been done. Um, but I want you to, to just look at these two job descriptions. You can look at the full job description and those highlights, and I, I want you to focus on what's different. They're both data services librarian positions, so theoretically they should be pretty similar, but I want you to just see what's different and just post your thoughts um, in the chat. So, oops, I just pasted it twice, but yeah, there's the two links if you don't have the folder open. Um, and then I'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes to read them, and then a couple of minutes to post in the chat. As you are noticing things, feel free to go ahead and post in the chat. 
So Anne noted that one's tenure track and one isn't. Responsibilities, percentages in one. Oh, and also one is the job description for this job. Um, and I tried to take out all of the identifying information, but I see that Rachel noticed where one was from, but I, th I think I left the locations on, so. Anybody notice anything else that's different? The term minimum qualification versus required. Yeah, basically the same thing. All right, I have a slide that has the just the qualifications. I couldn't fit the whole job description on one slide, but it's the um, qualifications sections for both side by side, if you want to take a look here. So some of the things um, that I noticed are we see a lot of language about data in the minimum qualifications on the university job description, um, and we don't on the state one. We only see data way down here, and it looks like a couple of bullets didn't come over. Um, but we only see it way down here in a preferred qualification, which is interesting. Um, EDI is a required minimum, or I'm sorry, a minimum qualification for university, and it is the very last preferred on state. Um, we've got like data management tools, again, required versus preferred. Um, on, on the state one, they talk about Ex Libris Analytics and the Alma Administrator Certification. Um, Ex Libris is an ILS, it's a company that owns an ILS called, well, it owns a bunch of them, but one of them is called Alma, and it's the one that we used at my previous institution. Um, so I actually, I have a ton of experience with Alma Analytics, and I did have the, or I do have the Alma Administrator Certification. So for me, those things like being like, oh, sweet, I have preferred qualifications, great. Um, yeah, those are some of the things. Oh, also we've got, we're talking about writing grants over here. There's nothing about grants on the right. Um, just little things like that. So we're gonna get into talking about writing a, the, the actual cover letter now. Um, so if we're, we're gonna write, or we're gonna pretend we have to write, it's already been done, cover letters for each of these positions. Here's just like some nitty gritty. Um, and if any of um, any of the other librarians have like different ideas on what to say here, please let me know, um, like at the end, not right now, but um, I, I'm like totally open to revising um, these couple of slides. But essentially a cover letter is, um, yes, I am I not sharing the slides? I'm so, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Suzanne. Um, oops. All right. You guys, everyone see the cover letter nitty gritty now? Yes, sweet. Okay. Chat. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so yeah, if anybody has different ideas, please let me know. But uh, essentially a cover letter is a five paragraph essay. You've got an introduction um, with an argument. I'm the best candidate for these reasons and a conclusion. Um, it's about a page. It will be in letter format. Now, depending on where you're applying and your personal style, it can be like formal letter format or I, I have never used a formal letter format on a cover letter. Um, it takes up a lot of space. And if we have about a page, it can be slightly more, it can be slightly less, um, but probably no more than one and a half pages. Um, that letter formatting takes up a lot of that. So I just have a header on all of my application materials that's the same um, for style and consistency. But if you're a very traditional person, um, it's okay to include formal letter format. But you definitely do wanna include your contact information. Um, the hiring committee is not going to mail you 
an interview invitation, but they might email you, they'll probably email you and they might call you. So you definitely want your phone number and your email. And then this is from my experience um, hiring a lot of people. Make sure that your file name has identifying information, your name and the description of the file. So type in cover letter, and then you can include the, the job title if you'd like. The reason I say that, I just told you I read almost 300 applications this summer. Um, and every time I wanted to read a cover letter, I had or a resume, I had to download it to my desktop. And I had about 300 cover letter one, cover letter two. Um, one person named theirs 99 resumes and my name is the one, which was hilarious and it made me laugh out loud. Um, but that person did not get an interview because they did not meet the qualifications. It was hilarious. Um, but yeah, make sure you name it something so that your um, potential employer can find it. You just like making it easy for them to invite you to the interview. Um, there's some conversation about like, do I send in like a doc or a text file or a PDF? Like what's more important? Um, or, you know, what's better? So if, if the employer is using an applicant tracking system, um, I've done some research that says that the dot doc is easier for the applicant tracking system to read. Um, and then if you're sending it to a person and you want your formatting to stay the same, a PDF is your best option because it's basically a picture file. There's not really a right answer. That's um, personal preference. Um, and I, th I think either one is fine. I personally usually use a PDF, um, but I honestly, I go back and forth. And then just don't forget, like you're also screening the, the library organization um, and you should be yourself. Like what's important to you? What are you most proud of that you've done? Because that's what you wanna have in your cover letter. And if you can't put the things that you're most proud of into the cover letter, then it's probably not a job um, that's the job for you. All right, so how are the cover letters for these two jobs could be the same or different? You do have the full cover letters in that folder that I posted earlier, but we're just gonna look at these paragraph by paragraph. Um, so here's the two introduction paragraphs. Oh, you know what, sorry, let me back up for a second. Whenever I'm writing a cover letter, I start from scratch. So I have a template that's like cover letter template and I'll show it to you at the end of this. Um, and it's just the, the letter formatting. And then I write every paragraph from scratch. Um, so what I'll do is, okay, I'm applying to, and we can see by, by the dates on these, one was January 2nd and one was March 18th. So, all right, it's March and I'm gonna to apply to this data services librarian position. I'm gonna read the job description, I'm gonna analyze it, I'm gonna pick out my keywords. And then I'm gonna open all of my other data services librarian letters, but I'm not gonna revise one of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy individual paragraphs over and I'm gonna make some changes or even sometimes sections of paragraphs. Um, and that's, that's just what works for me. But you can see on this one in the introduction paragraph, um, really what changed was the name of the institution. Like Rachel said, very important to get the name of the institution right. Don't be that guy that's like, nobody wants to be that person that has the wrong institution name. Um, thank you, Melody. That's a thing I should add. Um, how do you address the cover letter? Um, to whom it may concern? Um, dear hiring committee, if you want to address it individually and you know who the supervisor or the search chair will be, you can use their name, but it's not going to buy you any brownie points. Some people think that it will buy you brownie points. I've read a dozen letters addressed to me and four times as many addressed to dear hiring peoples. It, it's, it's fine, but um, try to avoid that gendered language. Um, but yeah, the only thing I did was the one um, had um, those ex libris Alma skills as a preferred qualification. And so I really wanted to highlight that I had those. So I put that into the introduction. And then we're going to go through each um, body paragraph also. Um, I organized them. The first paragraph, the first body paragraph we're going to look at is the one that changed the most. We'll talk about how to order it in a minute, but these are the paragraphs that are the most different. So the position on um, the left, um, the job description talked more about, oops, open data. Can you all see my mouse? Can you just thumbs up me, like the emoji thumbs up? If you can see my mouse, I can't tell. Sorry. 
All right, let's try. Where are these fancy buttons? This one's laser, I think. Let's try laser pointer. Great, can you see laser pointer? It's very large, cool, thank you. Okay, so this one talked about um, open data and open data sets. So I talk about that in the cover letter. Um, and then also about like organizational tools, which Tableau and Trello are both organizational tools. Also, um, not necessarily in the qualifications, but throughout the job description, there's a lot about it being a collaborative environment. So I made, wanted to make sure I really talked about that in my cover letter. If you haven't figured it out by yet, by now that's, um, that's the UNCG one, just FYI. Um, and then the one on the right here, um, again, this is pretty much all about all the analytics in here. Um, and different data analysis things that I had done using Alma Analytics. Um, you'll notice that this paragraph is quite a bit longer. This was, uh, we'll get to that in a second, sorry. Um, but this was my stronger argument for this position. So that's why that paragraph's a little bit longer. Um, the next paragraph, this is still, I did have, I said it was basically a five paragraph essay. Um, I had more than three body paragraphs. I had two body paragraphs for this particular topic because it was the data analysis section and it's a data services librarian position. Um, but you can see that over here, I talk about um, working on a grant proposal because that was something that was in the job description. And then at the very end, I close over here with provide user focused data services versus support data initiatives at. I'm basically saying the same thing, but that's that's me literally regurgitating the information from the job description. That's the language that they used. They're looking for someone to do these things. So I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do those things. Um, and then, like I said, we're getting like to paragraphs that are more similar. Um, this is about instruction. I actually had there was another data position that I had applied to in like summer 2020. So I actually drafted both of these using that one, but I was really, really proud of this particular paragraph. I got some feedback on that cover letter from two of my friends who are faculty librarians, um, and they really helped me write a really strong paragraph about instruction. Um, and I think it was pretty much this one on the right word for word. Um, I had worked as a school librarian with classroom teachers. They called those teachers faculty. Um, and this job description over here was talking about liaising with faculty. So I changed classroom teachers to faculty. And again, I talked about um, OER. And then here's my, this, this paragraph is about EDI. Um, this position had EDI as a preferred qualification. So it's a little bit shorter. I, I just cut this one section. Um, this position had it higher, so I wrote a little bit more about it. Um, why did I cut this specific thing? Honestly, that was the thing that I was the least proud of doing. It's a really cool thing that we did, but I personally don't feel like we did as good of a job as we would have liked to, where all of this other stuff is just like really cool stuff that I'm super proud of that went really well. So that's why I cut that. And then here's our concluding paragraph. Um, this position... It's about instruction, collaborating with people. That's something that I used to do as a teacher. I'm really excited to get back to it. This position was more about like, I learned all these data analysis skills in, um, um, in my current job and I'm excited about applying them in a new way. I just wanna talk really quickly about the order. Um, what order do you go on? So we already talked about it. They're gonna spend like 30 seconds a minute looking at your application materials. So I say, put your strongest paragraph first. Um, if they're reading 100 applications, they're, they're gonna be trying to pay very close attention, but they're probably gonna lose interest and they're gonna start deciding whether or not you meet those qualifications on your first couple paragraphs. So put the strongest one at the top to keep their interest through the rest. Um, so for this position on the left, EDI was important. It's also something that I'm very passionate about. So I wanted to highlight that. So I wrote it first and then instruction and collaboration was important. And then getting into like some of those data skills. The one on the right, um, I talked more about data analysis and Alma at the beginning. 
EDI was less important to them, but it's still important to me. So I still wrote it a little bit earlier. And then um, instruction. Honestly, reflecting on this um, and after doing the phone interview, if you look at that job description, it's it was very weird. Um, the summary has like a generic paragraph about librarianship that does talk about liaising with departments and doing instruction, but it's not mentioned anywhere else in the description. And I found out in the phone interview that that's because it was a, they were actually trying to hire a systems librarian um, who did no instruction or liaising or any of that, any of that aspect of librarianship or those aspects of librarianship. And they just, they had to call it a data services librarian because that's what they had to do to get it posted. Um, and it, that phone interview was a way for me to screen out like, this is not a good position for me. This is not what I'm looking for, but, um, okay, so that's that's cover letters. Um, I hope that you have some questions. Um, I wanna go through organizing the job search before we get to questions. So the first thing is we're gonna use a couple of tools to organize a job search just to keep things um, streamlined for us. So first I have a spreadsheet of all of the jobs that I want to apply to and all of the jobs um, that I have applied to. It's the same spreadsheet, but the information I include on there is, you know, what's the title, um, where is it, when was it posted, when is it due, what date did I apply so that, you know, I don't forget like, oh man, I think I applied to that job. When did I apply to it? Like I applied to it like three months ago and that, you know, maybe I don't know when it closed. So all of those dates are important. Um, notes as you're going through the application process and then the job posting link. And then the way I organize things, um, I had a folder with different resumes and CVs. I, I cast a very wide net and applied to a lot of different um, librarian jobs. So while I did not have an original resume or CV for each job, um, I might have a resume with skills related to data librarianship and a CV with skills related to um, um, access services. And I'll show you those in a moment. And then I had a folder for each application. Um, I started with just a folder of cover letters and make sure that you use a file naming convention. I showed you the name file, the naming convention that you should use when you're turning it in. I'm actually, I'm like nerd level a thousand and I have a file name in my folder that I use. And then when I download it to submit it, I change it to something for the employer or the potential employer. But in my folder, um, I would do job title and then university name. The reason for that is if I'm writing a new data services librarian position, I wanna quickly find my other data services cover letters to write a new letter. Um, and then I waited until I got an interview to download the job description. Um, the directions from Dr. Bright say to download it as you're applying, that is probably the smarter thing to do because sometimes they do disappear. Um, and then if I have interviews, I, I keep a copy of the interview questions as well as um, my notes. And I write a list of like all the questions they say, but I mean, that's more on the interview process. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something different. Hopefully I'll remember to share this time. Okay, yes, all right, you should be seeing a Google Drive folder. Can I just get thumbs up if that's what we're seeing? Cool, thank you. Um, all right, so this is my folder. I just made a copy of it. And again, I tried to take out the identifying information, but this is what my job search folder looked like. And I did delete a bunch of things, but this is my um, applications um, spreadsheet. Like I said, these are ones that I was going to apply to. So the title, the company, the location, all of that. I would post the job posting link. Again, that would have told you where I was applying. So I deleted them all, except for I made these like really fun fake ones up. Um, once I applied to it, I added the date I applied and then I turned it gray. If I heard from them that they weren't interested, I did the strike through. And if I heard from them that I got an interview, I just moved it to a new tab. Um, and that's where I really started taking some notes um, about the interview process and dates because, you know, like 
how long does it take for me to hear back about whether or not I'm getting the job? Well, I don't know, take notes on how long it takes you to hear back from them in the various steps of the interview process. I found that to be super helpful, but that was me. Um, and then these are just like things that I might use for any job posting. Like I had to write diversity statements a couple, for a couple of positions, leadership philosophies, philosophy of librarianship. So they're just here in my folder for me to use when I need them. Um, this references list is like anybody that I might use for a reference. And then if I needed to send it to an employer, um, I could quickly reorder them um, and then delete the ones that were irrelevant. Um, these are my different resumes and CVs. I have a, a, a wide range of skills and I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I wanted to be a data services librarian, but I wasn't sure how that was going to pan out. So I was, I, I have experience in schools um, and with youth. Um, so I have a variety of different, I had resumes with different skills and I had um, versions of my CV. Your CV, you're not going to change as much as your resume. That's a whole other presentation. Um, but sometimes I chose to include my PhD work and sometimes I chose not to, just depending on the position. Um, and then in my cover letters folder, these are, like I said, just cover letters um, organized with like uh, the title and then, oops, I did not take out the identifying information there, but the title and then where it was. Um, mostly I wanted to show you what my template looks like. So you can see like, I always had all of my documents with this header and then, you know, this is what it, what my template would look like. And then I would start writing and copying from other letters. And then just like I said, um, if I got an interview, I would just move everything over into a folder. And so like, you know, these are notes from the audio interview, et cetera. So that's what I had to share. Um, I think um, given the topic and the fact that we do have a lot of experts in the room, um, maybe instead of questions, um, we can do like general conversation. I, I, what I'm trying to say is I don't need to be the only person answering questions. So if other people have thoughts, I welcome you to share your thoughts. Um, but if you want to unmute and ask a question or type it in the chat, or if it's like awkward because it's like job search things, <laughs> you all have my email. I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the recording too, in case that makes people more comfortable. Um, Thanks, so Jenny. Here we go.